Friends. Goodness and wisdom to all. Welcome to the channel of learning and self-development. Today we are going to talk about such a great spiritual teacher as Buddha and about his teachings, which have not lost their relevance even after thousands of years. For most Buddhists, Buddha is a sage walking the bright path and an enlightened teacher of wisdom, but for most people who are not particularly interested in various philosophical and religious teachings, Buddha is some kind of Indian Chinese god who is always talking about suffering, about how everything is an illusion, and generally his teachings are not relevant for today. However, it is not all that simple. In fact, the teachings of the Buddha are still relevant today, and the interesting thing is that the Buddha himself has a direct bearing on our culture. If the history of Buddhism is to be believed, about two and a half thousand years ago in northern India, in the capital of the Shakya state, a boy, Siddhartha, was born. His father, King Shuddhadana, had been dreaming of an heir for 20 years, and one day his wife, Queen Mahamaya, saw in a dream a snow-white elephant enter her belly and woke up convinced that she was pregnant. It was soon confirmed. Very soon a boy was born, Prince Siddhartha, to whom the sages invited to the palace on the occasion of the prince's birth prophesied a great future. But one of them, the sage Asita, said that the boy would become a Buddha. By the way, Buddha is not a name at all, but rather a title, because according to Buddha's teachings, any of us can become a Buddha. We are all Buddhas already, but because of our own ignorance we do not realize it. When King Shuddhadana, his father, learned that the newborn child was predicted to become a sage and ascetic, he was angry, for he had dreamed that his son would be heir to the throne. Then this king decided to create ideal conditions for his son, so that he would never think about the fact that there is suffering in the world and that he would have to find some way to eliminate them. This, by the way, is a prime example of how self-development is impossible under ideal conditions. When there is no suffering there is no point in making any effort at all, because why, if everything is good as it is? Therefore, it should be understood that difficulties and obstacles are the greatest benefit on the path of self-development. So King Shuddhadana shielded his son from all suffering. He expelled from the palace all the sick, the old, the infirm. He created the complete illusion that old age, sickness and death did not exist. It got to the point where servants cut the wilted flowers in the garden at night so that the prince would not think that something in this world is temporary and subject to destruction. However, fate willed that the prince should face the truth of life after all. One day, while walking outside the palace, he encountered first an old man, then a sick man, and then a real funeral procession. These three meetings incredibly shocked the prince and turned his worldview upside down. However, there was also a fourth meeting, which was probably the most fateful of all. The prince met the ascetic hermit. He was so struck by his peace and tranquility that he made a promise to himself to achieve the same state. So that same night, the prince left the palace, exchanging his luxurious royal robes for the orange cloak of a hermit, which symbolizes renunciation of all worldly things. So Prince Siddhartha became an ascetic, he made a promise to himself to find a way out of suffering and then to tell everyone about it. In search of truth, Siddhartha, soon to be enlightened sage Buddha went to the famous yoga and meditation teachers of the time. He visited many ashrams of famous sages and learned something from each of them, quickly reaching perfection. Reaching the ceiling in each of the teachings, he left the ashram with the words, this does not lead to final liberation, I must seek something more perfect. Siddhartha then embarked on the path of severe ascesis, nearly killing his body with severe ascetic practices. After six years of rigorous ascetics, he went out to a stream to drink water, but was so weak that he lost consciousness. Only a kind girl, Sujata, who was passing by, saved him by feeding him rice. It was then that Siddhartha realized that austerities as well as the luxurious life in the palace had led him nowhere good. When he realized this, he sat down under the Bodhi tree, which still exists today, in a nearby grove and meditated deeply. Subscribe to the Summary Club and watch short versions of the most popular and useful videos every day. For 49 days he meditated under the Bodhi tree. In an effort to hinder the ascetic, Mara, the king of passions and desires, appeared before him. He told him that he would not be able to escape from the shackles of Sansara, the endless cycle of rebirths. At first Mara sent Siddhartha his beautiful daughters, who tempted Siddhartha with songs, dances, food, drink and their beauty. But Siddhartha resisted the temptations. Then Mara sent his large army of demonic beings upon the ascetic prince in an attempt to frighten Siddhartha. But by the power of his meditation and wisdom, Siddhartha defeated Mara's army. Then Mara himself appeared before Siddhartha and showed him the last test, the test of doubt. 
he tried to convince Siddhartha that he was following a false path and would not know the truth. Then Siddhartha touched his hand in the ground, saying, this is the truth. And I call the earth to witness. The earth, confirming the prince's words, trembled. At that moment, Siddhartha became a Buddha. Having attained enlightenment, Siddhartha went to Deer Park to deliver his first sermon there to his ascetic friends, with whom he was walking the path of rigorous ascesis. And it was there that the Buddha performed what is called the first turning of the Dharma wheel. Dharma, in this context, means teaching. The Buddha told the monks about the so-called Four Noble Truths. Their essence is this, there is suffering. Suffering has a cause, desires and attachments. Suffering can be stopped, and the state of nirvana can be reached. The Noble Eightfold Path leads to nirvana. The Noble Eightfold Path is another important concept taught by the great sage Buddha. It is the eight specific precepts by which suffering can be ended forever. Thus, as we can see, the Buddha is a great spiritual teacher. He is no god, he is a real yogi practitioner who by the power of his will, overcame all limitations and achieved enlightenment. And the most important thing is that this path is available to everyone, and the Buddha explained in detail how to reach the same state. We can see that the Buddha's teachings are still relevant today. The broad interpretation of the Four Noble Truths states that there are only three causes of suffering. The first is ignorance. It is not, of course, ignorance of Newton's laws, although that probably leads to suffering as well, especially at school, but a basic lack of understanding of how the world works and how we ourselves work. Ignorance, in turn, creates an illusory division of things and phenomena into pleasant and unpleasant. In fact, everything is neutral, and only our mind separates the pleasant from the unpleasant. And this illusory division gives rise to two other causes of suffering, attachment to the pleasant, and aversion to the unpleasant. And this leads directly to suffering. And, of course, the wise yogic teacher Buddha did not simply preach about throwing away all one's desires by engaging in extreme ascesis. Rather, he urged, through self-knowledge and self-improvement, a right worldview, the elimination of illusion, and thus an end to the anxiety generated by the pursuit of the pleasant and the avoidance of the unpleasant. For all that is manifested in the universe exists for our development. It is up to us to decide what to suffer from and what to enjoy. The guiding stars on the path indicated by Buddha are wisdom and compassion. And the one who has mastered it perfectly is the Buddha. Actually, that's why real Buddhists call Buddha an enlightened sage walking a lucid path and their spiritual teacher, not God as some other religious teachings or just uneducated people think. I hope we have told about it enough lucidly today, if anything write your questions in the comments we will answer the most interesting ones, if possible. And friend, don't forget to subscribe to the Summary Club for becoming more successful educated kinder and wiser every day. Save hundreds of hours and dollars spending on boring regular education. Feel free to write your opinions and questions about each video. We read all the comments. In addition, go to our official website, where you can find reading materials or watch other videos on channel and links in the description. All the best.